Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to look at the new Topaz Photo AI update. We're out of version 1.3. We're now into a new version 1.4. It now has a redesigned right panel and a new AI preserved text model. We're going to check that all out. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm excited about this new update for Topaz Photo AI. It now has a new redesigned right panel and a new text recovery model, which is pretty exciting. I'm really loving the direction that Topaz Photo AI is going. And if you like the direction they're going into, let me know in the comments section below. Please leave your comments. I'd love to hear from you. You might want to pause the video and take a look at the new changes since version 1.3.12. We'll get a look at the newly designed right panel as well as the new text recovery model. Topaz have also added support for Nikon's high efficiency compression. If you have a Nikon camera that takes advantage of that, that's going to be good news for you. By the way, if you don't yet own Topaz Photo AI, I have an affiliate link in the description below. Just click on that affiliate link and you can purchase Topaz Photo AI or purchase any uh, Topaz products. When you use my link, I make a small commission and that helps support the joy of editing with Dave Cully. And when you use my link, I really appreciate it. Let's take a look at this new right panel. Now you'll notice it looks different right from the start. I believe it'll show you the last six images that you've recently worked on in Topaz Photo AI, which is a nice feature here. And then we have helps and tips like getting started. Now you can click on these, it'll open up the internet and take you to a page where you could get all kind of info here. If you're new to Topaz Photo AI, this is a great place to start. And then we have user's guides. So click on this and it'll take you to Topaz user's guides. Great information. And then we also have features of Topaz Photo AI, all the features. So look at this information right at your fingertips. And I commend Topaz for allowing us to get really quick access to all this information. And as far as plugins are concerned, it lets you know what plugins work with Topaz Photo AI. And then you can click on these and read up on it and get the information that you need. And it's right here at your fingertips as soon as you open Topaz Photo AI. Topaz are a great company, and when they give us this kind of information that greets us as soon as we open up Topaz Photo AI, I think that is phenomenal, and I tip my hat to Topaz Photo AI. Thank you, Topaz. Also, check this out. The new Preserve Text Filter specializes in making smaller degraded text appear sharper and more natural than existing methods. It is also the first text enhancement AI model commercially available. So this is something never been done before. This is new technology. Okay, let's check out the preserved text. By the way, you'll see upscaling is now up here at the top. I'm upscaling mine 3.1 times. Let me go ahead and open up this module. And it's upscaled 3.1 times. And the reason for that is because if we come up here to Topaz Photo AI and go to Preferences and under Autopilot, You'll notice that under upscale, I have mine set for enhanced small images, and it will upscale them one and a half to four times. There's a drop down menu here. You can choose none, or you could set an output size. Just wanted to let you know that right up front. That's why this says 3.1x. And also, you'll notice something different too. The enhance section used to be separate, but now it's inside of the upscaling module. So that's a little different. And we still have remove noise, sharpen, and face detection, and the new preserved text right down here at the bottom. And now, if you change any of these sliders, like for instance, if I take remove blur and drag it to the right, of course, that has to do its enhancing. And by the way, the AI model area is the enhance section. And it's inside, as I said, inside of upscaling. If I want to set this back to autopilot settings, come up here to the three dots, click on this, and you can go to autopilot preferences or you could go to reset to autopilot settings so if you change something here and you want to go back to autopilot settings just click the three dots and click reset to autopilot settings and i'm just going to use the autopilot settings here today by the way the original size of this image is 1350 by 901 pixels so it's really small i'm going to go ahead and max it out to six times and now it has to re-enhance, as you can see. And now it's 8100 by 5406. So I've really upscaled it. By the way, at the top of the right panel here, 
you can see here's where we can click for our crop tool selecting subject as well as detecting faces and making changes in here let me just click on select subject to show you and we have all the same things here you know the different ways we can do uh, subject selection default portrait landscape or none and we have feathering and of course we have our AI brush and regular brush all that's the same I'm just gonna click cancel for now now the way we view the image is the same down here I'm going to go to the side-by-side -side view, and now we have a side-by-side -side view here. But I'm going to go ahead and zoom up to, let's try 100%. Yeah, 100% is pretty good, and we could take a look here. Now, I do not have preserved text turned on yet, so we can go ahead and study the image. Of course, the image on the left is the original. The image on the right is the upscaled with the settings for suppress noise and remove blur on it. And now let's check out preserved text. Right now, it is shut off, as you can see. So just click on the toggle here, and immediately it goes to text selection. Now you have an add brush, a subtract brush, and then we have quick select, and we have two choices, select all, select none. I'm not going to use that now, but if you have an image which is nothing but text, select all can be very helpful for that. But in this case, I have more than just text here, so what we need to do is select the text, and here's how we do it. First, I'll go down here and change the size of the image to fit. So now we can see. Now we also have this brush size right here, so we can adjust the size of our brush just by sliding this. Also, let's see if left and right bracket keys will make this smaller or larger. Yeah, it will. So you can also use your left and right bracket keys to adjust the brush size. And then all you need to do is start to paint over the text. And I find you don't have to be real accurate here. Just give it a paint over, okay? Just like so. And now that text is selected. And now all we need to do is click Apply. And now it'll run its Enhance again. Now we're seeing both images at full size, so it's kind of hard to tell. So let me go ahead and let's go ahead and zoom in. Let's go into like 200% and really get a look here. It has to re-enhance. It recovers the text. The image on the left is before enhancement. The image on the right is after enhancement. But let's just take a look around here, and I think you're going to like the results. Looks pretty good, right? Let's go over in this area right in here, take a look. But now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and shut off preserving text. So let me toggle this off. So that's what it would look like without preserving text. And as you can see, it looks smudgy down in here. And it's not as defined as it should be. It's not bad, I'll be honest with you. But let's go ahead and turn preserve text back on and let's see what the difference is like. Okay, a lot more definition here. Everything is really nicely done. And let's go and look at different parts of the image. Again, looking really good. Let's see without preserved text. Yeah, look how faded out this looks, and it, it just does not look good. But now when I turn on the preserved text, it looks like that. So I think it's doing an amazing job. Now, i got to be honest with you. I've tried this on different images, and it really does a great job. Hey, and if you try this out, let me know in the comments section below what kind of results you're getting on your images. Provide that feedback. I'd really appreciate it. Let's try an experiment. Are you up for an experiment? Let's try this. Let's turn on remove noise. And if I hover over this arrow, autopilot detected medium noise in this image. Okay, so if I open this up, you can see it's detected that noise and it's removed it. And now let's open up sharpen. And you can see it's, uh, if I hover over here, it tells me autopilot detected low blur in this image's foreground and it chose standard and here's the settings and of course we can always change these right now again the original autopilot setting said I don't need noise reduction or sharpening and I do agree with autopilot there and now let's check something out what would happen if I would shut off preserving text now let's see what the image looks like oh my goodness look at that that looks horrible right but if I turn preserve text back on, now it looks really good. So let me shut it off. And now I'll shut off sharpening and I'll shut off remove noise. And now it just looks kind of like faded out and smudgy and not very defined lettering or text. 
But now when I turn on the preserved text, it really looks great. But it wasn't that interesting when I had remove noise on. I'll do it again. I'll turn on remove noise and sharpen. And with the preserved text on, it looks great. But as soon as I shut it off, it all goes south. Amazing, right? Let me shut these back off. And this is the image without the preserved text. It's okay, but it's not great. But as soon as I turn on preserved text, it looks great. Now, let me go ahead and go back to a single view. And let's go and fit to screen. But look at that. That text looks really nice. And let's go to fit to screen. And so there you go. Now, if I left click and hold, we can see here's the before. And here is the after. But that is the new preserved text. I'm pretty impressed by it. Hopefully you are too. And let me know in the comments section below what you think. And now the image went from 1350 by 901 pixels up to 8100 by 5406 pixels. And it looks really great. And then once you're done and happy, just click save image. And this is all the same as it was before. You know, set this up the way you like it and click save. Well, there you go, everyone. That was a first look at the new Topaz Photo AI update version 1.4.0. Now with the new preserving text module as well as a redesigned right panel. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. You'll get notified each time I upload a new video. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.